LG Electronics has been a household name since the early 2000s. They make all kinds of home appliances from groundbreaking TVs, washing machines to solar panels that power entire homes and buildings. They've consistently racked in the top 100 consumer electronic companies in the world, albeit dropping down several positions in the past few years. While they continue to be profitable as a company, mostly thanks to their home appliances, their mobile division continues to bleed money and market share. They've lost so much in the recent past that people thought they would finally call it quits in 2019. However, this wasn't their case just five years ago. So what ended up making life, well, not so good for LG? The year is 2014 and it's a mixed one for the smartphone industry. Although the total smartphone sales crossed 1 billion units, there was a decline in the overall growth of the industry. It's safe to say that 2014 was the beginning of smartphone industry saturation. LG was riding high on the success of their collaboration with Google on the Nexus 5, their own flagship the G3 and other mid-range smartphones. They sold a total of 59 million units with a year-on-year -year growth of 25% and held 4.6% global market share. It's nothing crazy when compared to the giants and other Chinese competitors, but it's still a respectable sixth position globally. Speaking of giants, remember Apple iPhone 6's Bendgate? Yeah, this was the year. Apple would end 2014 salvaging their brand image and stock price, while the other giant, Samsung, would end 2014 with a negative year-on-year -year growth and a forgettable flagship sales performance with the S5. 2016 was LG's year to shine, albeit with caution. Caution because China decided to take the smartphone industry seriously. At this point, LG had two options in front of them. The first was be ambitious and compete with the giants in the flagship category. And the second was acknowledge the rise of Chinese companies in the mid-range segment and prepare to compete there. LG chose to go with the first option, which in my opinion was the beginning of LG's downfall. They launched the G4 and a new V series to compete with the Note series from Samsung and Plus series from Apple. But you see, by 2015, the premium flagship market had shrunk significantly and the perception of flagships had been redefined by Chinese companies. Chinese companies like Xiaomi, BBK, Huawei, Honor, etc. offered brilliant mid-range options starting as low as $150. But Chinese companies did not stop there. They wanted a piece of the bigger pie, so they created a new category, flagship killers. Smartphones with flagship level specs and features at less than half the price of the conventional flagships at the time. LG faced the heat. The G4 and V10 didn't perform as expected despite being better than Samsung's offerings at the time which were the Samsung Galaxy S6 and the Note 5. Additionally, since they neglected the mid-range segment, their total sales took a hit and barely increased from last year. Adding fuel to the fire was the infamous boot loop issue. This affected the G4, V10 and disastrously the Nexus 5X. LG acknowledged this was indeed a manufacturing defect but failed to respond appropriately. They did not recall nor provide an adequate solution to its customers. In fact, they went on to produce and sell more units with this issue. They tried to pull an Apple during the Bengate scenario which did not sit well with Google, the legal system and most importantly its customers. 2016 would have been a good time to reevaluate LG Mobile's business decision to compete with the giants. They should have sorted things with their customers, Google, and responded to the Chinese competition in the mid-range segment. I'm sure they did discuss these factors over, uh, but they decided to plow through with their initial decision. Due to which, Google pulled out of the collaboration and went to Huawei and later HTC. And that plow through attitude resulted in the G5 a mainstream modular phone that no one asked for. The market and the industry itself was not ready for it. The V20 did well with enthusiasts, but the segment was too niche to make a financial impact. Then it was official. LG reported massive losses due to poor sales and higher marketing costs. LG had lost the plot to the giants and the Chinese competition in the mid-range segment. LG finally showed signs of realization, but that wasn't enough. They launched a more conventional G6 and V30 in 2017, which performed poorly not because they were bad phones, 
but due to the perception of price to performance ratio set by the Chinese companies. And the giants, they had gone even further beyond LG's reach. For the record, I love the G6 and V30. They were the first smartphones to introduce an ultra wide angle lens and a quad DAC. But unfortunately, those weren't enough because of the price tag. In terms of annual report, I'm not even gonna bother displaying them here because it's painful or simply not available. You see, LG lost uh, their spot on the top smartphone vendors list, so analysts just dump them in the others section. 2018 rolled in and there was still no change in LG's direction. Same old iteration of the G series with the G7 and surprisingly two V series phones, the V35 and V40. And finally, prayers to the skies for sales. And the only response from up above? No thank you. One annoying thing with LG during this period was excuses. They blamed slowing growth in certain smartphone markets and decline in mid-range segments. Yes, the smartphone industry was in a decline, but not so much so that companies were losing massive amounts of profits. And remember, it was LG's decision to not concentrate on the mid-range segment, so blaming themselves? Yeah. Amidst the huge losses and blame games, they appointed Brian Vaughan, who was the head of home improvement at the time, to revive LG's mobile division. Internally, he was called the turnaround expert. He was bumped up to the position of CEO at the end of 2018. The change in management showed signs of improvement in 2019. It was visible through major changes in business decisions. LG Mobile had a new launch cycle for their G series which was the G8, the V series which had the V50 and a new G8X. They moved their manufacturing facility from South Korea to Vietnam to cut down costs. Their build quality and design had improved, user interface looked and performed better, battery life had improved. Cameras were still lacking behind the competition, but most importantly, their software update cycle had gotten better. Approved the G8 which was launched in Feb 2019 received its Android 10 update as early as November 2019. Despite the best efforts, LG Mobile continued to bleed money. The company's CEO is not giving up on the mobile division, not yet. And that's great news for consumers. One said that the division will be expanding its lineup and they will continue to steadily release new ones attached with a wow factor that will woo customers. Well, that's where my gripe is. LG went down the wow road and look where it got them. Yes, the premium segment is where the money is, but that's only if you can manage to sell. And given LG's brand image and current situation, that's exactly what they're finding hard to do. Here's what they should consider doing. Scrap the whole wow factor. Yes, I'm looking at the folding dual screen accessory thingy. The market, especially after the pandemic and the recession that will follow, is not ready for it. In fact, they will be looking for great affordable options. With Lenovo, Motorola, Huawei, Honor, ZTE all out of the picture, it's a great time to get into the mid-range segment. Take advantage of the wide. Heck, introduce a phone that will be the next G series, the Motorola G series. If they still want to compete in the flagship arena, go ahead, but this time with flagship killers. Heck, I would even go as far as to say compete with OnePlus before you compete with Samsung and Apple. Thankfully, looks like that's exactly what they're doing with the V60, a phone with the same specs as the S20 but priced 20% cheaper. Given the S20 series received mixed reactions, this would be a good time for LG to capitalize and market. Okay, I'm gonna stop my rant right there because news just surfaced and LG is doing exactly what we're asking them to do. They're going to revamp the G series. It's no longer gonna be a uh, top of the line Snapdragon 800 series smartphone. It's gonna be a Snapdragon 700 series smartphone and hopefully the price reflects that. I also hope they get the other aspects of the phone right, such as cameras, display, battery, and software update. If they do that, they're gonna do well in most markets and if this is the direction that LG has decided to take I can't wait for their sort of mid-range devices and I really hope they do come out with those because we really do need the competition and I really hope this is the year that LG turns things around and hopefully become profitable in the next two to three years. Alright guys, so that's about it for this video. I uh, really enjoyed making uh, an essay sort of video. It's different from what I usually do on this channel. If you liked it, do give it a big thumbs up. Uh, if not, do let me know what I can change in the comment section below. And do consider hitting that subscribe button and that bell icon for notifications. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care in the meantime.